stand up. I do improv comedy. Uh, I've been with Scare Scripless Improv for 10 years now. For a decade, I've been doing improv here in the state of Alaska Woo! with Scare Scripless. Uh, if you get a chance, if you haven't seen us, come out and watch us. We're here tomorrow night on this very stage doing improv comedy, a la Whose Lines Anyway. Everything made up on stage, nothing scripted, unlike everything you've seen here. Quentin came to me about two years ago because I teach improv comedy. How do you teach improv, you ask? It's all made up. Well, there's certain skills you have to develop uh, the scene work that we produce on stage. Quentin had none of these skills. <laughs> <laughs> Quentin would get frustrated in a scene, would stand there, and then just start swearing uncontrollably. <laughs> and now, two years later, Quentin gets in the scene and swears uncontrollably, <laughs> but in character. <laughs> it's a very impressive thing to see. Uh, uh, seriously, uh, a little while ago, he and I were talking. Uh, he told me he was doing stand up. I said, hey, let's do something like this. And he and I got together. We work here so much, we wanted to put this thing off. And because of Quentin, this really happened. He brought the comics, uh, I brought the venue. Uh, Chris and Snow just really helped out. In between that, we all met together in the middle. We put this on for you guys tonight. We really appreciate you coming out here and watch this. Uh, Quentin's really the big driving force for this. Uh, we want to do this again and again and again, so I'm glad you guys came out. We're glad you guys are all here. But for the next 10 minutes, Ish, shorter if possible. How about a big round of applause for the youngest comedian on stage, or probably in the theater this evening, Quentin Johnson, everybody. I, I didn't even start this thing, getting all the credit. <laughs> like, Chris over there started it. I was just the comedian, and <laughs> I'm getting all the credit for it. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> oh, so thank God it's Friday. Oh my God, thank God it's Friday. Like Mondays suck, and there's a reason why that's a common saying. <laughs> because nobody likes Mondays. Like even the word makes me a little sick. <laughs> Doesn't make me feel good. Makes me want to just like go back to bed. <laughs> like the only morning people you should know is either your mother or your grandmother, because those are the only two voices I want to hear in the morning. Like, hey honey, how's it going? Uh, and, and she knows I'm hungover. It, I, I could be in a suit, and she already knows I'm hungover. But I'm battling myself in, and I get a pot of coffee, and finally I'm sitting there drinking coffee, and then, God forbid, my little sister is right there. And, and I love her to death, but she is the worst person to be around with in the morning. And it's not my fault, by the way, because all she wants to do is talk. <laughs> and, and I pay attention to everything she is saying. And I've already done more for her than any other woman I've listened to. <laughs> I listen to her. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, so I was thinking about getting an IQ test the other day. Because I can. Like, right, there's no legal requirement saying that you have to get an IQ test. It's just more of like freely wanting to see how educated you are, which I'm really scared of doing. <laughs> because, like, I'm, uh, I just know I'm not smart. <laughs> I just know it. <laughs> And my biggest fear is just going there and the doctor coming out and being like, Sir, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you suffer from retardedism. <laughs> You're retarded. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and the last thing I need for my self-esteem is for the government to have a certificate stating me <laughs> as a complete idiot. <laughs> I, I can't have that. I already have all those people on Facebook. <laughs> so, so growing up, my mother was an alcoholic. And it had its ups and downs. Mostly downs, because she would always yell at the neighbors. Especially during December, because she hated Christmas. My mother hated Christmas so much that one time she tried to fight the tree. <laughs> but the tree ended up pinning into the ground. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> oh. 
Christmas one. <laughs> so my mother's dead. <laughs> just, just in case anybody was wondering. <laughs> That's what somebody told me to say the other day. They said, you should tell people more often. <laughs> and everyone's like, so what's it like having a dead mother? It's hard to explain. But it's kind of like eating a rotten tomato. You know, it's gross. It doesn't taste good in your mouth. You're almost crying. And it's not good at all. But you, once you finally eat it, and it goes down your system, you're settled. And you're satisfied. I'm not glad she's dead. I'm just glad that the tomato is finally gone. <laughs> does, does that make sense? <laughs> uh, so be careful when you're taking advice from people or like when you're kind of living in general because you never want to take advice from your enemies. You, you really don't. It's the worst thing you can ever do. So I remember in high school once, I had a bully who was in my English literature class. And I told my teacher, I was like, hey, how do you spell Christmas? And he was like, hey, Quentin, it's just like Christ, as in Jesus, and it's M-A-S, Christmas. <laughs> now I know how to spell Christmas, but every time I spell it, I always think of stupid Matt who would bully me all the time. <laughs> every time, Christmas. Fuck Matt! <laughs> Stupid Matt, you ginger. <laughs> Always making fun of my speech. <laughs> my dad's not how we fun! <laughs> you stupid asshole! <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs>